a Biomotion Lab. This is Nathalie. She will be doing rhythmic gymnastics here. We're going to put on her reflective markers all over her body and then we'll track them with infrared cameras that we have here in the laboratory so you can see the cameras around her. And you'll see that on the screen, we're going to see her performing the motion in live or after when we record it. And then we can do all our calculations to show if her motion was one way or if it needs to be fixed or performance analysis. When I give lectures, I talk about sports biomechanics, I talk about clinical biomechanics, and I always ask, is there somebody in the audience who has an ACL reconstruction? Do you know somebody who had a hip replacement, a knee replacement? back problems, pain in their joints and their muscles. Everybody knows someone. In the U.S. alone, there are over 200,000 ACL, anterior cruciate ligament injuries a year. Those injuries lead to surgeries, and surgeries lead to osteoarthritis 10 to 15 years later. So 50% of ACL reconstructed patients get osteoarthritis later on. So how do we stop that? I'll take you to my lab and I'll show you how we do that. We look at clinical biomechanics, so the analysis of motion on clinical populations such as osteoarthritis. And then we also have the sports biomechanics and performance side, which we look at athletes, uh, Olympic level, elite level athletes, trying to help with analysis of the motion and performance and helping the coaches and the athletes themselves. So now we're doing a static calibration pose. So basically you're standing off the force plates and then you're going to walk onto the force plates and stand up straight. Part of the research is that these professional athletes do then have injuries. So we develop wearable technologies to help people with stimulation and incorporate feedback to help them correct their motion patterns. Some of the wearables we create in-house, from Arduino sensors to different microelectronic sensors, then we have to program them, put them into an encapsulated 3D printed personalized device that you put on the body. So we did a lot of research to see what would fit all subjects. We then came up with something like this, which is flexible wire. So here it doesn't break. Basically it's Nemo, keep a knee in motion because motion helps. Inside we have all the electronics that are encapsulated. Here there are vibration motors and then there are motion sensors. So every step I take, I get a vibration. It goes on, off, on, off intermittently. From heel strike, it stops and then it goes again. And that helps me with masking out pain to help people with their motion. We sort of overstimulate the somatosensory system and then activate the mechanoreceptors. And then we're helping these people get over the pain and their kinesiophobia, so their fear of motion, and do the motion uh, in a better way. What's unique about our laboratory is that I'm trying to solve issues with making the motion analysis more wearable and outside the laboratory so that we don't have to confine it to the laboratory setting. Joint and muscle skeletal problems, I used to think of them as a mechanical wear and tear problem from motion. You do too much motion, you make wear and tear, you have a problem. And now we know that it's a multi-system, multi-modal approach. So we have to look not only at the motion, the mechanics, which is where I come from, so I want to do that, but I had to go into the biology, the biochemistry, the physiology, and also the anatomy to look at the structure and then the psychosocial approach. So then you have all these factors and you have to come up with a multi-systems approach to see what the problem is and how to tackle it and how to put all the pieces together. I did my undergrad at MIT, came to the Technion to Biomedical Engineering, then went to Technion uh, Mechanical Engineering, do my PhD, and then went to Stanford. And I always wanted to build my own motion lab. So Technion Biomotion Lab was my dream lab. Zuckerman helped me with building the lab and we're trying to use our science, engineering, technology, and medical backgrounds to help with these populations and to make the dream come true.